to start off and be like, well, holy shit, that was crazy. <laughs> that was pretty nuts, wasn't it? That was. <laughs> Quit yelling. Anyway, wow, what a race, huh? Yeah. Dallas. That was nuts. There was way too much to go on to talk about. We could talk for hours. We could literally pull a Pulp MX and talk for five hours about everything that happened. Can't do that. But we're not. So, so anyway, Man Bear Pig and Travis are back. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> for the week here. Talk about Dallas. See where we're going. Where are we going next week? Minneapolis. The Minneapolis, new the new dome. New the dome. New dome. Yep. new dome. It's interesting. So we'll cover the 250s and the 450s today. Get into our Rocky Mountain Fantasy picks. And later this week, be on the lookout because we are going to do a video about 250 East. Yeah. Because that's coming up next week. So we got all that and more coming up now. Okay, so let's start 250 class here. Let's start with the uh, the big story. McElrath has a good night, Feel jumps out in front, leads, what, 10 minutes of the race, and then yeah, boom, more than that, yeah. bike problems, and he's done. That's it. Yep, it's the championship's pretty much over with. Hill's, Hill can basically get top fives the next three rounds going into Vegas, or the next two going into Vegas, and he's pretty much got it wrapped up, and he's proven that, you know, his whole tendency of hitting the deck and throwing away championships is pretty much done, so there'd be no reason to believe that he's going to throw it away now. So it's it's pretty much wrapped up at this point. I mean, I don't see anything different happening. No. Um, you know, he is just consistently, consistently fast this year. Um, you know, again, I feel bad for Shane. I do. Look, look good. Had a good it, night yep. going. He should have left there with the red plate yep. and I a two-point lead, but... What are you going to do? Gremlins jumped up and grabbed him. Wasn't his year. Nope. And, uh, you know, and also to kind of touch on the Hill thing, too, he did something he's not normally used to and backing it down, and he looked perfectly fine with getting second to Shane that night. Mm -hmm. You know, he closed it from five back to three a few times and then back to two, and he looked like he was fine with settling into second, which shows that he's matured because a couple years ago he would have just he would have hung it out and tried to catch Shane and, he just didn't, so I, I'm happy for him. I know we got three rounds to go, but I think that this championship is his, and it's it's a cool thing. He's He deserves it. But, yeah, really bad luck for Shane. He's pretty much out of it, and you could tell after the main, or after the main was over, the him and Hill, the conversation they were having, that Hill or um, Shane looked pretty distraught. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, it, it, But it happens, though. It's racing. Yep, so, um, you know, and then staying right on the podium there. Forkner. Forkner. Yep. Looked, uh, you know, he is, in my opinion here, forcing himself to be fast. Yeah. He's uncomfortable all the time. He's hanging it out all the time. Yep. I mean, you had the huge case on the triple in practice, yep. which he should have went down on. Getting loose you the had whoops. the loose in the whoops multiple times through the whole day. I almost mean, took, it almost takes hell almost out. Almost takes hell out. I mean, the kid is literally for, I think the pressure is getting yep. to him mm -hmm. of, hey, you're supposed to be the next great thing. And he's not... He's not producing. Quite there. I mean, he's producing. He's producing. He's doing, he's doing well. But he's not living up to, oh, you're the next heir apparent to, you know, well, I guess you could say But he's not Cooper. winning. No, he's not winning. And like I was talking to you before we did the show, I think it's really, it's finally kind of getting to him that he's not the fastest guy because, you know, like I said, in outdoors, he had excuses. Well, I'm not going to call them excuses, but he had reasons to say, well, oh, you know, I got a bad start. The races that he didn't run up front or win. Well, now, other than uh, in Oakland, he's been up front almost every race. And he just he hasn't been able to get the job done. And kid's doing great. First year. Once again, we gotta keep remembering he's a rookie. But yeah, I, I think that he's just it's finally coming into his mind that, oh, I'm not the fastest guy anymore and this is not just gonna come that easy to me. Not saying that he thought it was gonna, but yeah, I think you're right. It's it's creeping into his mind that he's just not the guy in Supercross. Mm -hmm. I so. mean, he's still producing. I mean, he's been on the podium, what, the last three weekends? Other you? than other than Oakland. Oakland uh, he got it in Glendale, right? Got it in Glendale. Yeah. And he did one other round, I think. But, yeah, either way, he's just – he's not used to it. No. Nope. He, he's not used to getting beat, guys. He came off of, you know, 20, 25 championships as an amateur, a couple race wins outdoors, and, I mean, he, he hasn't even been close. No offense to him, but he hasn't even been close to the sp the pace to win races. No. He, he gets good start, He's which is – he did that in amateurs, too. He was yeah. Like, Excellent starter. Helps but, 115 pounds. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> beyond that, then he leads for five, ten minutes at most and yep. then gets blown by by these vet guys, which again, he's got this is creating a great base for him to build on. Yep, it does. As far as going forward, like the next seat next year, his sophomore year, yeah, he's he's going to be great because he's yep. going to have all the knowledge from this year. Plus, he's got good finishes, so he's got confidence. Hey, I can run up front. 
and then just continue to build. So I, I think he'll do. I think he'll do well. But I, you know, the hype of well, he's going to be the 2017 West yeah. Coast champ is out the door at this point. So and honestly, one more thing to touch on that. I think that, and I've seen it quite a bit, not not his last year in A class as an amateur, but quite a bit in the B classes and a few um, warm-up races in, in the A class, and it's proved in Supercross because, for example, the heat race or the few times that he's been leading this year, when he gets pushed out of his comfort zone, he doesn't ride, he's not comfortable riding past that point. Mm -hmm. He's comfortable riding on the edge, but when you got to step it up, when it means either winning races or hitting the deck... He's not comfortable doing that, and that was one problem he has as an amateur. When he really got hounded and it really got into his mental state of, oh, I'm not comfortable with this, he's prone to making mistakes. And it's been showing this year that if you if you latch on to him and you make him think about it, Austin makes mistakes. Mm -hmm. So but yeah, he's doing he's doing great. Second, that's that's awesome for him. So All right, now let's move on to the to again the podium again. Uh <laughs> Aaron Plessinger. Oh my gosh. Cannot buy a start, man. Nope. Poor kid. Looked looked uh, phenomenal. Phenomenal in the main. The rest of the day had troubles. Like in practice, yep. like I told you earlier. Um watch it second practice. He put went out, put in two heaters towards the end, turns around, looks after he crosses the line. He's not in the top five. And he is obviously frustrated, banging on the bars. Yep. Um He's not where he wants to be, but he's not he's not in awful position. No. But he's just not winning like he should be. He should have won that race on yeah. Saturday if he had, had he not started ninth mm -hmm. or eighth, whatever it was. Um, he was clearly the fastest guy on the track. That lap when he ran around Jimmy D on the inside in that first set of whoops, I'm like, I, I my jaw actually dropped. We I was went like, around him on the inside and then gapped him two turns later. I think I think it kind of shot Jimmy when he got in the corner because I kind of seen him look down and he probably was thinking. Where in the hell did this just come from? I had like ten bike links that coming out of the corner. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that it's it's I it's frustrating for Aaron because like we talked about, this is probably his last year in the two fifty class, and there's a lot of pressure on him to win. And I, he's just not by his own fault. You know, he's the biggest kid in the class. It's just it's it's frustrating for him because he knows he can win, and he just it starts. You know, but. But outdoors looks positive for him. If he can ride this well outdoors, because mm -hmm. outdoors with the longer races and everything, you don't have to necessarily get the start. He could start 10th place yep. and still win those going away. Yeah, he's he's one of my favorites for, for outdoors and stuff, but it's just he's he's got to get his starts down. I don't know. I haven't really paid close attention. I don't know if it's his reaction time, his technique or whatever. But he's gotta he's gotta get those down because it's just it's gonna get to the point that that's not a valid excuse anymore. Mm -hmm. So, but he looked great. Yes, he should have won if he had a start. I honestly think he even Shane. I think he would have yarded everybody pretty quickly. But it's it's getting to be now. It's a completely an issue, and they got to get it figured out. But he looked good. He mm -hmm. looked great. So, second in points now. Yeah. Can't Unfortunately for Shane, but can't, can't complain about that. Nope. So. Okay, so moving on to the 450 class here. Let's start with, uh, yeah, that was a super event for us. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start with uh, the number one plate here. Ryan Dungey looked awful. Terrible. All day. Terrible, guys. All Terrible. All day. He is not the Ryan Dungey we've seen nope. the last two years. He nope. is just, I don't know what's wrong with him. I've, you know, speculated before. Yep. Maybe there's something in his head since he crashed and watched Kenny go out. That he's like, nope, I'm done. Yep. Um, but wow, that was, that was, that was bad. bad. That from, was bad. From practice all the way through to the night show, it was bad. 13th is, I think, I don't honestly think since he's been in the 450 class, he's ever qualified worse than 8th place. Not that that's really significant, but my point is, I don't think he's ever qualified worse than 8th place since he's been in the 450 class, and that, that was terrible. I mean, that mm -hmm. it was bad, and you know, like we've been talking about, he's been having issues, but now all the people can't say, like I was telling saying earlier, you can't say, well, oh, like with Glendale, oh, that was, you know, that was a Chad Reed track, hard pack, you know, square edged or Oakland, deep, greasy ruts like Tomac winning. That's three weeks in a row now, guys, that he's looked horrible and there's there's no more excuses for yeah, him. Yeah, there wasn't. They there. got all three practices there. He it won his heat the, race. It was the normal track like you would get, slick, hard packed, freaking just reddish terrible. dirt, whatever. Yeah, and he just he didn't look good. He got a shit start in the main. Yep. He didn't qualify well. He nope. did well in the heat race somehow, 
But even even going into the main, he couldn't pass Dino. For like Took four him or five, five laps, laps yeah. to pass <laughs> Dino. And I mean, no, not taking anything away from Dino. No. Dino's a great rider. But Dunge should have gotten around him. Dunge is three yeah. levels higher yeah. than him. He should have blown his doors off in a lap, and he didn't. And he straight up didn't. He struggled with everyone. He couldn't get by Baggett yep. in the beginning. Yep. I and, mean, uh, and and if Coop and Eli don't have problems, Dunge doesn't even finish in the top five. Yeah. You I mean, think, he's not even yeah. close. Coop goes out with a flat tire, and he was looking good, and yep. actually going forward. Yeah, close in a little bit on Marvin. Yep. Not a lot, but Not a lot, lot, but a little. And then you've got Eli was on a freight train ride yep. coming so, forward. So it's, it's not the same, guys. Like we've been saying all year, and obviously mostly me, just because I've been critical of him, he, he's not the same guy. I know he extended his points by, by one race, but let's be honest, guys. You know, you can't say, well, oh, Dunge will podium you to death. Well, he didn't even podium this time. And Marv's got his first win. He's confident. If Dunge keeps riding like this, that championship is going to go away quickly because you can podium someone to death, but fourth, fifth, sixth places, you can't You can't win championships, not even Dungey style. And let's be honest, guys, the last three weekends, he's gotten his doors blown off. I know he mm -hmm. led in Oakland, but when Tillman got around him, he gapped him. He's gotten his blows door up. Don't uh, blown off for the last three races. Mm -hmm. He hasn't even been close to the leader's pace. No. So. so, and you know, I've heard stuff too about like, well, Kenny's gone, so now his mind is all screwed up because that was his mindset coming in. And you know, Dunge's mindset, I don't necessarily think is to blow someone specifically away. It's no. to win, period. Yep. Well, now um, he's not even winning. Yeah, now he's not doing that. So, but moving on to his teammate, yep. Marv. Gets awesome. his first win. Awesome. Awesome. Love the dude. Yep. Great job on his part. Yep. I mean, wire to wire, whole shot and go. Um, dude, I mean, he just looked good. He And the track was, like it they was said on the Mar broadcast, style. it was Mars style. And it was similar to uh, Atlanta last year yep. where he should have won that race. Yep. Um, you know, so, I mean, just a great day for him overall. He looked good. He won by a, not a, like, large margin but it was heavy oh, yeah. enough he won yep. by what six seconds or something Some, something like that over and that it was like so, well, i think it was eight at one point or something yeah, but so so great race for him yeah that that track was shaping up early for marv like you said hard pack concrete not a lot of transitions you know you just had to be real smooth and methodical which marv is one of the well in my opinion he's far and away the best in the class at doing that connecting the track and that that was marv that was that was set up for marv to win i mean he ripped a start and he sprinted four laps just straight nonstop, and he was not going to be denied that first win. Mm -hmm. And he, um, good for him. Like I said, like the guy, you know, his whole nucleus is really good. And um, hopefully, you know, that'll lead to more wins now because, you know, once you get the first one out of the bag, it's it's a, it's like a huge weight lifted off your shoulder. And, you know, Marsh should have won last year in Atlanta, and he didn't. So it, it's good for him and you could tell how emotional he was on the podium that means a lot to him so you know we 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 always talk about parody in the class mm -hmm. and i looked at this the other day six rounds we've had four winners already which which the, is about what we have for a whole year last normally. year uh well the last yeah well, the last couple years yeah you're right yep. it, it's been that way so now it's like okay cool we've already got four and we still have guys like ando sealy coop all who, you know, even, we'll say Chad Reed, even yeah. though it's doubtful well, yeah, or whatever, but all without a win. Yep. So, I mean, you know, you're looking at the potential. We could have five, six, seven guys win races this year. And honestly, and, and I know we talked about it, and, you know, and you said it specifically, but we all say it every year, the most stat class. Well, it's finally actually living up to it that is. hype. It, it has is. been the most stat class we've had because, like you just said, we haven't had, that's the most amount of winners we get normally. But it's usually not till round 12, 13 that we get that many. Mm -hmm. You know, usually it's always the same guys. And, you know, I like you said, Coop, Ando, you know, Cole, Chad Reed, whatever you want to say. You know, I don't really know anybody else in the class that could really get one other than that. But it's, it's crazy. And it's finally living up after 10, 15 years of us saying that the most stat class, it's finally living up to its name. So it that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, continuing with you know some positives that happened on the night, let's talk about Dino. Yep, that was awesome. Best ride in well since he's been on a 450. I mean, he's yeah. had a couple good motos outdoors, but the reemergence. Whether you want to say that was because everybody else had problems, but like we just talked about, he held off the champ for a good five laps, and he did. He he was looking good, and it didn't look like you know he was no he wasn't timid in any spots. He was riding out of his comfort zone. And hopefully it's a building point because yeah. honestly, I like Dean. I do. He's a good kid. He's got awesome style. Girlfriend's hot. Okay. Real hot. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, it's really cool. I'm glad for him, and I really hope that this boosts his confidence, and this could be a sign of things to come because 
he's got the talent. It's just he's had bad luck, and you know maybe maybe we'll see some top fives, maybe a podium by the end of the year. I'm not counting on it, but dude, fifth place that was awesome. Good building block for him. Yeah, you know, great ride again. Held off Dungey for a long time there, yep. um, which was good because Dun Dungey was not blowing him, no. blowing his doors off by nope. any means. So nope. Um, so yeah, great ride for Dino, and then we can move into. The, a piss poor ride. The shitty part of it. <laughs> the shitty part of the night. Uh, Tomac coming off two wins. Yeah. Looking great. Looked good during the day. Yep. Looked good in his heat. And then actually went straight out of the heat to the main, which was impressive because he hasn't been doing that the last two weeks. And then boom, gets in the main and break problems. Yeah, that that was um, just a shitty situation. Yeah, and uh, I don't know that it's it's. It's Tomac esque for some stupid stuff like that to happen. He just he flat landed the corner and he just loaded up on the brakes too hard and the front end washed. And whether people are saying he had brake problems before, knife in the front end as hard as he did, caused it, whatever. But I still think if he would have got back up and wouldn't have had brake problems, he still could have maybe got second. But it's typical, you know, he had a chance to uh, capitalize on Dungey having a bad night and he couldn't put it together, but that wasn't that wasn't an instance of Tomac just pushing it too hard or, you know, it was just bad luck, plain and simple. That's what yeah. it was. Yeah, uh, you know, if it was if it was a mistake on his part, it was a little mistake that just ended up costing him big. Yep. If it was actual bike problems, because I've heard both ways. I've heard hey that the, he was having brake issues, and that's what happened. And if you watch it, he actually nice he to the right. He, I would say he crashes before the corner too. Yeah. Supposedly, what he's saying is it locked up on him going into the corner. Which, if that's the case, okay, fine. Like, there's nothing he can do about that. That's out of his control. If that's yep. the case, you know. And and I give him credit because he very easily. If that would have been, and people are gonna hate me for saying that, if that would have been James Stewart, James would have left the stadium. Yeah. He would not have continued. No. But Eli's like, cut the brake line. We'll go back out. We'll get what we can. Which he got 15th, six points. You know, he it, salvaged points. Yeah, it was better than nothing. Yeah, and honestly, what's weird is, is it, you know, it, I don't know. I, I don't, the thing that I'm curious about is, is what actually happened. The only thing I can think of is, is that it wasn't a rotor problem. It was a master cylinder problem because he knifed it to the right and all of them run discard. So mm -hmm. the chances nowadays on a factory road bike of bending a rotor is very, very slim. But either way, you know, he salvaged points, and he was smart about it. He, Yeah, like you said, he could have easily pulled off. But it just it sucks because he got on a roll, and he had a chance to capitalize, and it could have been under 10 points. And he just, he, I don't know, just stupid stuff. But everybody had problems that night. I mean, Coop got a flat tire. Reed got a flat tire. You know, so. There was a lot of, lot of action in the pits. So. Yep. Yeah, that was like a, uh, I hate to use this, but that was like a NASCAR pit stop. <laughs> it was a lot of different ways. So. Yep, so. Okay, so now we're coming to the end of the show here. So RM Fantasy Picks, mm -hmm. top five and seventh place this week. So you can go ahead. Okay, uh, I'll start off then. Let's go with first place. Uh, Ryan Dungey is going to win it. Hometown race. He's got, Dude, he's going to put it together. It's his hometown. He's going to feel it. He's going to feel good. He wants to get the win in the new stadium. Dunge is going to win. You're going to get, uh, I think you're going to get, if, Tomac doesn't have any issues. You're going to get Tomac in a solid second, but he's going to pressure Dunge. Could be, could be, wait for this, <laughs> just, could be another Cowie KTM battle in Minnesota. When was the last time we saw that? RV. Oh, God. RV2, baby. Oh, my God. Remember him yeah. and Dunge going back and forth, but Dunge pulled it out. Why? Because yep. they were in Minnesota. Yep. So I think... I think we'll get a good battle between the two of them. I think Dunge is going to win it, though, because he is in his hometown. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, Eli pulls a solid second. He's still got confidence. Yep. Um, you know, Again, that might have not even been his fault, what happened yeah. there. No one will ever know other than him. Uh, I, I'm going to put Webb in a solid third because yep. Webb has figured out that Yamaha and is now jiving with it to mm -hmm. the point that he can make moves. I'm going to put... Uh, whew, now we're getting into the nitty gritty. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you basically, for the last two spots, you have three riders. You have Marv, Sealy, and Anderson. Mm -hmm. You know, put them in a hat, draw them out. I'm going to say Marv goes fourth place okay. because he's got a lot of confidence after that win. And I'm going to say Sealy goes fifth because Sealy's been super duper consistent. Yep. Okay. Now, getting into the wild card, the seventh place, uh, I'm going to go with Dino on that. 
Because I, I think Anderson goes sixth, Dino goes seventh. Because Dino's got a lot of confidence, but I don't think he's quite got that 20 minute plus lap speed yep. to stay up on the top five or the podium if all those guys stay mm -hmm. in it. So, so that's my that's my top five. We've got Dunge, Eli, Coop, Marv, Sealy, and then wild card of Wilson. Go. Those the you know what? Once again, it's it's basically been the five six, same five six guys now that Kenny's been hurt. It's kind of hard to argue with that. Um, my point that I'll make that's going to be interesting about this weekend before I go into my picks is is what the dirt's going to be like because it's either going to be two things. It's going to be that typical East Coast really tacky deep ruts where you can just lay it over. Or with them getting a lot of moisture up there with all the snow, is it going to be like an Oakland, except indoors, where it's very greasy, slick? So I think that's going to play a thing. I think that's going to be a or big thing. more of a like an indie because the dirt's so soft yeah, and well, it just ruts up. Yeah, yeah. It's just awful. Basically, like I said, it's it's going to be tacky, but it's going to be really greasy because there's going to be so much moisture. The only reason I said Oakland is just because we just had the race. But yes, i am be very curious to see with the dirt because I think that's going to play a factor. But getting into my picks... You know what? I would like to say that I believe Dungey's going to get a win because he's had three un very not typical Dungey races. But you know what? I still think that Tomac, this is his confidence is up. He's going to be pissed that you know Arlington didn't go well. I think if it does run up and it does get like an Indy, I think that that's going to be Tomac clearing away. I don't think I think even Tomac gets an outside the top five star, he'll win going away. So I'm probably going to put Tomac first. I think people are going <laughs> to. Disagree with me, but I still don't think Dungey, Dungey's not going to get top two. I think that Coop's been building, had the flat tire. He was looking good up until that point. I think that we're going to see the emergence of Coop. He's going to show that he can run that speed, and I'll even say I think Coop surprises us all and leads for 10 minutes. I really do. I, I think that he's got the pot, he's got the speed. We all picked him for a win this year. I don't know if it's going to happen just yet, but I'll say Coop in second. I'm going to say third. I'm going to say coming off that win, I'm going to say Marvin in third. I think Dungey gets fourth again because I'm sorry, guys. I know that, you know, you're just waiting for it to happen. But I think we got to come to the realization that the typical Dungey that we've seen since he's been in the 450 class or his whole career, that's not that guy anymore. So we've seen three races in a row where he's basically got his doors blown off and he hasn't done anything with it. What makes us think, and I understand his hometown race is going to be in a good mood, but what makes us think that all of a sudden after three races that's going to change? Because we got to get over this thing that, well, just because it's Ryan Dungey. Ryan Dungey hasn't had three bad races in a row his whole entire career. Ryan in fourth, and I will agree with Cole in fifth. I think Cole getting second is going to give him some confidence. But let's be honest, it might have been uh, a second place by or a, uh, yeah, second place by default because of guys going out. I think a fifth will be a good spot for him, and. I was going to say the same thing as you with Adino in seventh, but I still think that if Bogle wouldn't have went down, he could have got top five. I think it's a good place to put him. I think that he's he's getting back in his comfort zone, and like you said at the beginning of the year, he's kind of showing who we thought Bogle was going to be. You know, he's got the speed to win. He gets good starts, and, you know, he was, what, running fourth up until that crash or something. I think it was either third or fourth cra up until that crash. So I think seventh's a good spot, but I could also see Wilson getting seventh. I just... I, I I don't know, man. The, the it's up in the air. Let's face it. We're going to do the picks, and then they're all going to be wrong. Yeah, they we have scored, We scored a total of 15 points each last yeah, week we, because we had three dudes in the top five that yeah. we were like, oh, cool, they're in the top five. That's it. So it's really the RM Fantasy stuff. It's kind of a shit show for picking stuff. Now, a question before we kind of wrap this up. I know you have Dungey in first and then me giving him you know, fourth place, but do you think that if Dungey gets off the box and he looks like he did this last weekend – do you really, even if he's got the points lead, do you really think it starts setting in that this might be the end for Dungey? End of his career? Yes, him retiring. And I know that it's. I don't. I don't think he's gonna go past this year anyway. I think even if he wins. But both, I mean, everybody else, because you've been. We've heard all this different talk in the industry that oh, it can't be his last year. It's his last year. But let's be honest. When's the last time we've seen Dungey look this bad? And then if he does it, and now he could go out and win once again. His hometown race. He's gonna be in a good mood. He's gonna be around his family. But if he has another bad race. Dungey's never had mental problems, but he's I, gonna be hearing a lot of flack. I don't think I don't think you hear it from other people who I, I think what you end up with with Ryan Dungey, and this is what happens with a lot of the great people, yep. is you get the same thing you have with James Stewart. The people, oh he's gonna come back. Oh he's gonna do this. Kinda oh like he's gonna Poto do that. Too. Yeah, with Villapoto, with you know, when Reed decides to finally say, Okay, I'm done after this year, whatever. Yep. You know, 
you're, you're going to get the same people that, oh no, Dungeon isn't going to go any, he'll, he'll come back, they're going to sign it, no. Dungey, hope. yeah, Dungey doesn't want it anymore, he's, he's like James Stewart right now, but he's still, he's just at the edge of his prime. Yep. But he's the same way Stewart was last year, uh, he doesn't, he, he doesn't, doesn't have it want anymore. it anymore, yeah. he doesn't have it, he knows, there's kids coming in yep. that are doing things that he's not going to be comfortable doing, nope. and he's not going to do it because he doesn't want to get hurt again, um, so, you know, I, again, I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I think this is his last season, yep. win, lose, or draw. He's done after outdoors this year. Well, That's for, it. Game over. Well, for instance, and nobody did in the in the heat race, it's just because of how rutted up got in that right-hander, but Dungey didn't even size up that 3-3-3-3-3 three, 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 three section in, in practice. Like, Tomac did it. I think uh, Cole did it one lap. There was a few guys. Once again, it didn't matter because nobody did in the in the night race. But Dungey didn't even size that up one entire time. And if you even noticed, he didn't even go 2-3-3 three, three single. He went 2-2-3-3 two, two, three, three and then singled into the corner a lot of the night. And granted, once again, Dungey's not one of those guys that will go out and huck a gnarly line the first you know, few laps. But that's two races in a row where a fast line that a few guys were doing that, well, three races in a row actually, mm -hmm. dating back to Glendale, that he hasn't up, hit the main line to separate himself. And once again, that's, I just, my point is, is that, if he has another bad race, are we really going to start seeing the downfall of Ryan Dungey, even if he's got a points lead? Good Pe possibility. People are really going to say, well, if he wins a championship, that this he actually was not the best guy to win it this year. Mm -hmm. He was the most consistent, but if he goes out and he wins, what, one more race this year? I mean, let's be honest, guys. They used to do it with James when he would race Carmichael. It's not going to be a good look for the, his end of his career if he does retire after this year. Mm-hmm. So that's just that was my point. That's the only reason I asked that because it, it does bring up a good question. Comment about it below. Yep. Let's hear what you think. Uh, thanks for tuning in this week. Like, comment, subscribe, um, share it with your friends, share it on your Facebook page, whatever. We need more views because we want to keep doing this. Uh, we're gonna later this week, probably Wednesday or Thursday. I'll drop our video on East our East Coast 250 riders. What we think. And uh, again, give us feedback, comments, even if you like, hey, they suck, or you want to give me like a thumbs down dislike, I'm okay with it. But uh, that's the show for this week, so we'll see you guys next week after Minneapolis.